تبارك الله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي جعل ذكره طمأنينة للقلوب وجلاء النهى عن رين الذنوب ومطردة لوسواس الخناس المكذوب والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد الداعي إلى كل فعل محبوب وأمر مطلوب وعلى آله وأصحابه المقتفين سبيله على خير أسلوب أما بعد فيقول رب تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المنزل أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان الشمس والقمر بحسبان والنجم والشجر يسجدان وقال تعالى فانظر إلى آثار رحمة الله كيف يحيي الأرض بعد موتها إن ذلك لمحي الموتى وهو على كل شيء قدير صدق الله العظيم Continuing from last week where we touched on the need to inculcate within our minds and hearts the sense of utter dependence on Allah for protection in the world, for protection from shaitan, for he is an enemy that is determined, an enemy that is persistent, and an enemy that is invisible who can see us. The good news for us in these blessed days of Ramadan is that Allah has chained the shayateen. He is chained. They are locked away in order to give us time to cultivate our deen, to develop our connection with Allah and to make right our life that is wrong. Aspects of our life that are in need of fixing Without the, without, without the interference of shaitan. But we still see people committing sin. We still see sin and evil in the world, even though shaitan are, the devils are chained. Now there are two answers to this question. One is that only the, the main, the big shaitan, the senior ones are, are chained, but the little ones continue to make trouble. And of course, there are shayateen al-insi wal-jinn. There are shayateen of jinn, and there are also shayateen that are followers of shaitan in the form of human beings. And they are not changed, the human beings, the ones that do whisper into people, that lead people astray and call people to commit evil and to do wrong. And this is why we said, min sharrir waswas al khannas الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس from jinn and na, from people and from jinn both they are shayateen so that is one of the answers and another answer which my teacher used to give is the one of inertia the one of habituation to sin where we are habituated to sin to such a degree that we do not we no longer need shaitan to push us into sin and to push us into evil, because we are accustomed to it. We have habituated ourselves into sin. And he used to give the example of a fan, this fans that we have. He said, when you switch the fan off, it continues to spin. And so it is when we take shaitan away from our lives in Ramadan, we still have remnants of those habits, those things that we do habitually, and the mind and the nafs, drawing us towards sin. And... I emphasized to you last week the need to have a sense of helplessness in front of this battle with shaitan. And we cannot succeed in this battle with shaitan unless we seek refuge, unless we become refugees in the fault of Allah. 
min maydan ash-shaytan ila hisn ar-rahman from the field of shaytan to the fortress of allah to the fortress of ar-rahman the fortress of the compassionate one the fortress of the one who has everything you need all your help that you need is with allah and this brings us to today's lesson today's discussion which is moving on from isti'adha in salah after you've said a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem the next thing is bismillahir rahmanir rahim tasmiya and in hanafi fiqh we recite that that is sunnah in shafi fiqh it is fard and hanbali in, uh, as well they recite it as uh, sunnah but the shafi the maliki don't and they have their dalil for it but here we are reminded by saying ar rahman ar rahim we are entering we are recognizing the nature of the support we will receive in this refuge we have moved now from maidan ash shaitan ila hisn ar rahman and hisn ar rahman has a support mechanism when we are in the hisn of rahman then we realize that it was allah's rahma that surrounded us from the very beginning allah's rahma is around us before us above us under us everywhere we look we will find allah's mercy enveloping taking care of us and that is the support we need to recognize when we say bismillahir rahmanir rahim we are recognizing the name of allah as ar rahman ar rahman the merciful ar rahman the compassionate ar rahman the loving ar rahman the benevolent ar rahman the beneficent ar rahman the gracious ar rahman the forgiving ar rahman the one who gives bounties ar rahman the one who favors ar rahman bi rahmatil hayat allah gave us rahma his mercy brought us into existence none of us here remember submitting an application to be born do we no but allah brought us into existence you are out of existence and allah decided that look i want to bring this person i want to create you as an individual that is allah's rahma so rahmatul hayat then rahmatul aish everything you need for life allah has given you in the world you needed food he's buried it under your feet you needed air he's surrounded it around you in a cushion of air that we can breathe all breathe and you needed water he poured it from above so rahmatul aish everything you need has been taken care of rahmatul matar rahmat of the rain rahmatul hawa this wind yursilur riyah bushram bayna yaday rahmati that he sends these winds that bring the bounty and the favor through his mercy rahmatus sam'a rahmatul basar the mercy of hearing he could take away your hearing tomorrow he could take away your sight but all of these are mercies from allah rahmatus sama saqfan mahfuza the rahma the mercy of allah in placing a protective canopy above above the earth above this planet upon which we live if allah allah tells us that this i have put a sama a saqf mahfuza it's a protected ceiling i have put above the earth and now we know that if that ceiling if that atmospheric cell that protection that we have above us if that were to be moved away then we will all die of radiation within days but allah has put saqf mahfuza rahmatan ash-shams the shams we need the sun and there we get night and day rahmat al-layl wa an-nahar the the mercy allah's mercy and compassion of night and day and then rahmat al-qamar rahmat the is given us a moon without the moon we will not have tides and we will not have seasons or uh, we will and then rahmat al-aql he's given us mental capacities that is his mercy he has given us the heart to contemplate he has given us rahmat al-dhikr rahmat al-sitr He has given us the rahmah to remember where we came from. He has given us the rahmah to sitr. Let us ponder on rahmah to sitr. Sitr is the rahmah of his covering. How much does Allah cover of our faults and our sins? Imagine if all of our sins had bad smell. How would we walk in the midst of people? Bad things in the world have bad smell. 
But Allah did not cause our bad sin to have bad smell in this world. Yawm al-Qiyamah, people will smell the fumes, the bad smell of bad, bad actions on the Day of Judgment. And people will say, Where, who are these people? And they will say, the fornicators and this person and that person. But in this world, there's sitam, there's cover. If a mother, if our mother should find out, or our father should find out all the things that we do, they will say, this is not my son. If my friend find out of everything I do, they will say, this is not my friend. But Allah covers what we do, covers our mistakes. Allah knows everything, but yet he covers it. And why does he do that? Because he is giving you an opportunity to rectify yourself. So the covering of the sitri, and he says that, look, no, wa in ta'uddu ni'mat Allahi la la tuhsuha. Wa in ta'uddu ni'mat Allahi la tuhsuha. That if you were to count the favors of Allah on you, you will not be able to enumerate it. You will not reach the end. You will never be able. Because the more you ponder, you will see that Allah's mercy is unfolding one after the other, layer upon layer upon layer. We are recipients of Allah's mercy. And that is the title of today's lesson. The sense of being a recipient of Allah's mercy, Allah's compassion. Because in even when we think things are bad, we think, we see things in the world and not realizing that there's that is blessings in disguise. And this is one of the things I want to deal with today because we, our young people are challenged with these questions. And one of the questions that a young man brought to me that he is challenged and people do this, shayateen, come to corrupt your deen, to take you away from Allah, they find things that are due to the limitations of the human mind. The human mind cannot understand everything. So they find little pockets of misunderstanding and then throw them at you in order to corrupt your iman and your yaqeen. And one of the things they say is that, look, you talk so much about the rahmat of Allah and the mercy of Allah and the compassion of Allah. Why is there so much pain and suffering in the world? Why is there so much pain and suffering? This is one of the questions that is put forward. So how do we answer this? What is it? Can we see? Let us ask, why do we suffer from pain? Where does pain come from? Allah created us. We have pain. Let's put, us, let's put aside life and death. Life and death is decreed by Allah, you will die whenever Allah has written to you, written for you to die. But when it comes to pain, let us analyze pain. Where does pain come from? Why do we feel pain? We feel pain because Allah has created our bodies such that we have pain receptors. We, have give, we are given pain receptors. Millions and millions of pain receptors Allah has given us in our body for a reason. And the reason is, to tell us that something is wrong. In order to draw our attention, draw the body, the mind, the heart, the brain, into recognizing that something is wrong. In every square centimeter, there, there are of your skin, only on your skin, in every square centimeter, there are 200 pain receptors. Put there by Allah. Why? Why did Allah put pain receptors on us? Because if you do not have pain receptors in your body, you will not know when things go wrong with the body. If you do not have pain receptors on your tongue, when you eat, you will chew and swallow your tongue with your food. But Allah has put this. So the pain receptors that Allah has put in you is rahmatullah. It is a mercy. It is like an alarm system. We want a good alarm system. So every a pain system, an ability to recognize pain, is, an, is, a sophistic, is a sophisticated alarm system that Allah has given you. Allah has put this in you. Now if we misuse our body, if we corrupt the planet, if we spread poison in the air and plastic on the, uh, on the surface of the earth and destroy, shaitan says that what he will do, that, uh, uh, that I, would, I would lead them astray, and I will lead them astray so much so that they will change the creation of Allah. That they will change the earth. They will pollute the atmosphere. They will, do all, they will do all the things that will bring corruption and lead you into trouble. And then when you feel the pain, who do you blame? You blame Allah. When we, when we suffer, instead of recognizing that the reason we are 
suffer, we are feeling pain, it's because of the bounty of that alarm system that Allah has placed in us so that we can recognize. The example of this is that imagine if I'm driving my car recklessly and plunge it into a lake and the alarm goes off and someone comes to you and said, the real problem here is the one who put that alarm in the car. And he fails to see, he fails to recognize that the person has been driving his car recklessly. The person has not been, care, uh, been taking care of his car. And he has no idea about how to drive and he, he has no value for his car. If the alarm system goes off, will you blame the one who put the alarm in the car? This pain that you feel is an alarm system that Allah has put to tell you that things are going wrong. This is a mercy from Allah that Allah has given you the ability to feel pain. If you don't ask people, when you go to the dentist for dental work and they give you an, a, an injection to take away your sense of pain from the mouth, they, they warn you not to eat anything, not to chew any food because you will chew your tongue. Why is that? It's because you can no longer feel the pain. People who suffer from diabetes have their legs cut off like they're cutting their fingernails. They cannot feel it. So they do not need any anesthetic to cut their legs off. When you lose this bounty of feeling pain. So when we recognize that even pain is a bounty from Allah, the ability to feel pain is something that, get, that Allah has given you to tell you that there's something wrong with the body that must be fixed. Then we cannot use this to undermine our iman and to destroy our feeling, or destroy that bound, destroy our connection with Allah and being grateful for the mercies, the endless mercies that Allah has given us. مَا أَصَابَكَ مِنْ حَسَنَةٍ فَمِنَ Allah. That we have to be clear in our minds that whatever has reached us in this world of good is from Allah. وَمَا أَصَابَكَ مِنْ سَيِّئَةٍ فَمِنْ نَفْسِكَ And any bad that reaches you, then it's from your own self. You the one who does this. You are the one who caused this upon yourself. Yes, there are moments where Allah will test you and he'll put you through tests and you might think it's bad, but then in the end, on the day of judgment, you will realize that no, it was a test and Allah has passed me through. When Yusuf, when Yusuf السلام, was thrown in the well, that was seen as bad, but he would not have become the ruler of Egypt had he not been thrown into the well. So Allah's bounties are sometimes hidden his his mercies are sometimes hidden we cannot see it but we must not blame allah we must not blame allah for the corruption that we bring onto the planet but we bring on each other the evil we do to each other and then blame allah if people feel pain so if there's evil and there's suffering in the world then know that it is not allah that is causing this it is it is the actions it is our own actions that have led to this and we are to blame not to turn around and blame that alarm system that Allah has given us. Now, the next thing I want to talk to you about is that the fact that we cannot always recognize the rahmah that Allah has sent. That Allah's rahmah that Allah has placed for us in the world. That sometimes we will see it and sometimes we cannot. But there is one that you can recognize and you can see in its purest form. There is one manifestation of Allah's rahmah that you can experience, that you can, you can feel, and you can recognize a, a, that this is pure mercy from Allah. And that mercy is the mercy in the heart of your parents, the mercy in the heart of your mother, the mercy in the behavior of your mother. And I want to read you, I want to leave you with this story that Imam Ibn Qayyim writes about the Salih, one of the Salihin wrote this story about the mother, the love of a mother, but before I do so, I also want to read to you, remind you of this hadith that Allah says that he, if you were to, that he has a hundred mercies, he made mercies, his compassion as a hundred, if, it, if you imagine that it was a hundred, he sent one to the dunya, one in this world, to be distributed among بين الجن والإنس والبهائم والهوام between the jinn, the human being, the insects and the animals. We all share this thing, this one mercy that Allah has sent. And it is that mercy that makes us love our children. It is that mercy that makes us show compassion. We use that same mercy from Allah, that same act of love, that same power of love and compassion that we feel when we see our children. 
That same one is the one from Allah. So it, in fact, it is Allah's mercy. It is Allah's love for your children that is take, finding manifestation in your heart. And the same one that tells, حتى تعتف الوحش على ولدها And in hadith, Rasulullah explained to us that the wild beast becomes a compassionate being. The wild beast that eats and, sh- and shreds and kills, that becomes a compassionate being. حتى ترفع دابتها خشة رجل حافرها عن ولدها that a wild beast then is careful about stepping. It doesn't put its leg down in order to be, care- to be compassionate to its young, not to trample its young. It, it shows compassion, a wild beast, because of that mercy. And seeing that mercy in action in, in the heart of your mother is instructive in recognizing the mercy of Allah. And that is what I want to read this, why I want to read, read to you the story that they wrote. They said, Ibn Qayyim said, then, بعض العارفين أنه رأى في بعض الشكك that he saw in um, a, a pathway where there were some houses and he saw a door قد فتح قد فتح وخرج منه صبي يست, يستغيث ويبكي and he saw suddenly the door opened and a boy ran out shouting and crying. A young boy ran out and shouting and crying. وأمه خلفه and his mother is uh, behind him, running, came out behind him, and chasing him. Hatta kharaja, and then when he, when he went, to, when he moved far away, فأغلقت عليه الباب. So she closed the door on him. فأغلقت عليه في وجهه in his face. ودخلت فذهبت. So she went back into the house, and the boy walked off. And he says, he walked for a little distance. غير بعيد ثم وقف. مفكرا, he sat up and then thought for, for a while. And then he realized that فَلَمْ يَجِدْ مَنْ مَنْ يَأْوِيهِ غَيْرَ الْبَيْتِ الَّذِي أُخْرِجَ مِنْهَا وَلَا مَنْ يَأْوِيهِ غَيْرَ وَالِدَتِهِ He realized that he has no one else who is going to take care of him who will be as kind as his mother. So he walked back to the house. To the house. فَرَجَعَ مَكْسُورَ الْقَلْبِ His heart broken, he's sad. فَوَجَدَ الْبَابِ Mughlaqan, he found that the door was closed and he couldn't get in. So, فَتَوَسَّدَهُ وَوَضَعَ خَدَّهُ عَلَىٰ عَتِبَةِ الْبَابِ So, he decided to lie down next to the door. He was tired and he went to sleep. And he, the door, the, the, the pillar of the door, he used that as a pillow and he went to sleep. وَنَامَ So, he went to sleep and then eventually his mother came out, opened the door and saw فَخَرَجَتْ أُمُّهُ فَلَمَّا رَأَتْهُ عَلَىٰ تِلْكَ الْحَالِ And when the mother saw him, and I'm particularly um, moved by the story today, many years ago to, on this day, my mother passed away. And for those of you who have mothers, you should value every moment you have with them. Because when they're gone, you will realize what an opportunity you have missed. Not only in seeing Allah's mercy in action, but also in securing your pass to Jannah that you will get by serving your mother, you can enter into paradise. That mother, when she saw that little boy, فَخَرَجَتْ أُمُّهُ فَلَمَّا رَأَتْهُ عَلَىٰ تِلْكَ الْحَالِ When she saw him in that state, sleeping on the ground, لَمْ تَمْلِكْ and رَمَتْ بِنَفْسِهَا She was unable, she could not hold herself and she threw herself to, towards him. She threw herself to him عَلَيْهِ وَالْتَزَمَتْهُ وَتُقَبِّلُهُ وَتَبْكِي And she started hugging him and kissing him and crying and saying, يَا وَلَدِي Oh my son, أَيْنَ تَذْهَبْ عَنِّي Where are you going away from me? مَنْ يُؤْوِيكَ سِوَاي Who will take care of you other than I? أَلَمْ أَقُلْ لَكَ Have I not told you? لَا تُخَالِفْنِي وَلَا تَحْمِلْنِي That do not go against me وَلَا تَحْمِلْنِي بِمَعْصِيَتِكَ And do not let your disobedience and your mistakes draw me in conflict ala khilafi ma jubiltu alayhi min ar-rahmati wa shafaqati alayk wa iradati al-khayr lak he said do not let did i not tell you not to let your disobedience and you turning away from me push me into conflict with the thing upon which i was created with the love of rahma that I was created towards you. You are pushing me. You push me in conflict with the love and the affection that I was given for you and iradatul khair 
and that pushing me in conflict with the wanting of good for you. Everything a mother wants for her child is always good. It is the most sincere. There is no, no more sincere wish that you can find than the wish in this world of the wish of a mother. When she says that she wants, when she says that she wants your khayr, then know that it is pure, it is sincere. Because it comes from that one, that mercy that Allah has sent in the world, that captivates her heart. May Allah forgive us for hurting the heart of our mothers. And may He forgive those of our mothers who have passed away. May He widen their graves and open windows to Jannah unto them. Pray for my mother and for all of our mothers who have passed away. And know that Allah is hundreds of times more merciful than your mother can ever be. For Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw a mother once in this similar situation with the boy. She lost her child, it was in battle. And then eventually she, she was running wild in the street and then she found her child. And she picked him up and she pulled him close to her, to her chest and hugged him and kissed him. And Rasulullah saw this and he said to the Sahaba, do you think that this mother will ever throw her child into the fire? And they say, La, Rasulullah, the, the Sahaba said, No, no, they can, how can this be? And then he reminded them that Allah is more merciful. Allah is more merciful than this mother could ever be with her child. So if we might have lost our mother. But we have Allah. We have Allah's mercy. And Allah's mercy is the only thing that will, the only thing for, with which we can survive. The only thing with which we can succeed. For Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Sahaba that no one will enter into paradise with his actions alone. No one. And they said to him, Wala anta ya Rasulullah, and not even you. And not even you. And he said, he said, Wala ana, and not even me, illa Allahu bi rahmatih. Except if Allah envelops me in His rahmah. So seek Allah's rahmah. Recognize His mercy in this world and recognize that you are the recipient of Allah's mercy, millions and millions of mercy in every second of your life from the day you were born to the day you will die. You are a recipient of mercies upon mercies upon mercies for which you are to be grateful and the best way to be grateful is to stand in worship and saying to Allah you are my Lord and praying because it is for this he has created you may he bless us in this month to raise the quality of our prayer to raise the quality of our devotion to him and bring us closer in the recognition of his rahmah wa jazakumullahu khairan wa alaykum تبارك الله